how to tune a 208C. Now, there are a lot of trims involved in tuning a 208C. So to get a good understanding of what affects the tuning, you should study the frequency flow chart that can be downloaded from the Bucala Support webpage. There you can find all the inputs that affect the frequency, which is the same as the pitch, of course, and their associated trim pots. There are trim pots for pitch offset and range on the inside, back, and underneath the reverb tank inside, but you shouldn't ever need to access those. Those trims set the range of the bottom and the top of these faders. Here, if I turn this on, you'll hear it. The bottom range of the of this, turn it up a little bit. Bottom range is C1, approximately. And the top is F1, F7, or approximately F7, plus or minus half a step. They're very touchy trims to get right, so it can be off a little bit. Now, the bottom means that's about 33 hertz, and the top is about 2.8 kilohertz, or, and the rest of it usually tracks about what it says here on the panel. So to tune an oscillator, um, besides using the fader positions, you use the fine tune pot. That's the obvious thing. This is the thing that tunes it. And at first, because it's an analog instrument, you have to let it sit for a minute or two to warm up. Because after you've had your 208C on for a few minutes, it'll it'll sort of settle down. And, and now you use the fine tune pot to tune. And so I'm using a tuner here. And I just set it there. See, it's not necessarily the middle. The middle is just a reference. It's, it's This one's a little off-center. We tried to set it from the factory pretty close to the center. But you'll need to use a tuner to know for sure, or your ears. So, uh, the other inputs, uh, and that includes this one. This one is also approximately the same range as this one. So... The other inputs that affect the tuning are the volts per octave trim pots. These aren't really tuning trims. These are these trims here. These aren't really tuning trims. They are tracking trims. Or to use a guitar analogy, the fine tune knob is like the tuning peg. And the trims here are like stretching the fret positions. In other words, tuning is done by the fine tune pot, but the control voltage to pitch tracking calibration is done with these tracking trims. These trims should be factory set to 1.2 volts per octave for the banana input and the MIDI input board that translates MIDI into control voltages. But there are user they they are user alterable. They're they're available on the top and you'll see on the side too just in case your CV source varies a little or in the case that the user simply hears the need to fine tune it a little bit more. The trim for the keyboard input is next to the keyboard on switches. And that's the one we're gonna talk about. Uh, remember that both the MIDI to CV this, or the MIDI to CV, the, the, the MIDI input to CV control on channel one, and this banana input here travels through the same keyboard trim. So if you adjust this trim, you might have to adjust the other trim later. You always address this trim first, no matter what the source is. And if you then find out that this is not right and you want to readjust, then you can go back and make this match this. Um, basically, this trim on the side is meant to uh, match whatever input is here. So if you put in 1.5 volts per octave here, you're going to have to adjust this trim because this is set for 1.2. So that said, let's focus on the keyboard inputs. First, put all the oscillator faders all the way down and set the oscillator to sine or to triangle. Um, and be sure you're listening to only one oscillator time at a time. The easiest way to do this is to plug into the direct outputs. That's the least confusing. But if you must, you can open up and close the gates and open and close the channels and use the main outputs. Um, but it's a little harder to keep track of. 
Also, if you're playing with MIDI or a 2018, for instance, you play note 24 for zero volts. That's the lowest volt. That's the lowest note on the 218. Uh, the simple way to know if you've got the right bottom note is to simply turn it off, turn it back on, because the default position is um, zero volts is the state of the fader all the way down and C1 on a tuner. So here we got, it looks like uh, C1 is now a little bit moved here. So we're gonna move C1 back. And if you're looking at a DAW, it might be an octave off. Uh, you can do the math for yourself because all musicians know, all musicians know that tuners list the octave that we know of where middle C is C4. So three octaves down is C1. The simple thing to do from here is to simply play octaves until they are in tune. If you're using a 218, you can use the octave keyboard. And you go, and um, then you, you go to the keyboard tuning trim here and you tune it to the So we're over here. Yep. Okay. So you play your octaves. I like to go up to C4 and use C4 as my reference. Now you'll notice that. And then you go back to C1 and you see if they're both in tune. And then you can go, I can continue to go up. And that's, it's as simple as that. Simply go up, use a higher like C4 or C5 as your reference and go from there. If you use C5, you can sometimes be a little bit more accurate in the high range, but it all depends. Um, here we go. Okay. On earlier revisions like this one, there's a little bit of stretch tuning, sometimes beyond uh, C5, and that's not unusual. It's, a, it's that way also on the E series range. But on later revisions, I sort of tightened that up a little bit. So that's the simple way to tune here, is to simply start at C1 and tune your octaves. Uh, you do the same thing with the complex oscillator. You go to, you find C1, you tune fine-tune knob until you, you're happy with that then you go up go to this trim now and then you go up an octave and you use, use the higher octaves for the reference you're just using the first octaves to get in range there you go As I use C5. Okay, so that's how you tune um, to for instance up to C5. I use and then you'll be in pretty good shape. Um, like I said, if you go a little beyond C5 Different revisions will have slightly different behavior. Now, that's so that's pretty simple. So why don't we then go and do it with MIDI? So MIDI is the same. Now that we've got that, we want to make sure the MIDI obviously works as equally well. Uh, I'm going to use um, a Q Nexus here. Um, this one uh, actually hasn't been through the factory. It, it, I, this board was installed separately. So this is particularly interesting if you installed your own 208 MIDI board into a 208C that did not have it previously, you might have to tune this. The top trim here on the side um, is right over here. You'll see a hole. If you remove this, you will see that there is a hole here that you can access with a slotted trim to adjust this tuning, to match this. The other way to do this is actually to lift it out and trim, use the trims 
without having the side exposed. Uh, it just takes a little bit. To me, it's a little less convenient. So we tune trim one. It's to C1. Check the next octave. Get that sort of in range. And then we check the other octaves. So if I go up to C5 and use that as my reference. Okay, so there I went up to C5 and used that as my reference and right. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, that's the simple way. So you've now tuned your on the side, just in case you had a new one, and uh, you've tuned this. Now, like I said, if you go, if you don't have, if you're not using this input, you don't really need to take off the side and trim this. You can simply tune using this input. It'll affect what happens, sorry. It'll affect what happens here. But if you're not using it, um, you really don't know what you're referencing here. Maybe you're Keyboard is good 218 with a solid 1.2 volts per octave. Maybe it's something else, an early 225, which is maybe 1.17 volts per octave, and it needs some trimming up. Nonetheless, your focus is on these two trims. You can do the same thing with these trims here on this input. There are trims associated with this fader um, that go here. Uh, so when it's all the way up, you can also tune, use the same routine and tune these two. Um, that's up to you for independent output, including this one has a trim for the similar reasons, although I tend to find this trim is so touchy that it's really better for tuning the sequencer to a low range, like an octave or something like that. Um, so I would tune that way down. Um, and then beyond that, um, there's two more inputs on the side, uh, two more trim pots on the side, I should say. Those are for trimming uh, independent use of the uh, oscillators. So you can put this one on uh, this on channel two and this on channel three independently. This one is independent from this and it's independent from this, the two lower ones. So I'm tuning. Tune that first, right? And then go up the octave. So that's pretty good. Now we go and we tune the modulation oscillator the same way. And keep going up until you get to about C5, use that as a better reference, or C4. Check to see one is still in tune with what you want. Whoops, wrong, wrong, fine tune. That one. See, this is the beauty of making sure you go into the direct outputs, is that way you're not confused which one you're working with. Now, C3 is a little bit flat, but it's within about five cents. So, you're going to find some variation between the octaves. Um, the main point is you can be within uh, a certain amount of sense, sharp or flat, uh, not unlike an acoustic musician. It's just the nature of analog electronics. See, actually, I'm getting C8 up there. It's pretty good. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, like I said, most of the time, if you're going to mess with tuning, mess with these two trims only. And this is a, a tracking trim. Of course, if you're tuning, 
you're using these trims, which we try to keep center for C1, but you know, if, you're, if your system's a little bit off, it's okay if it's down there. This is a pretty wide range, so you shouldn't fret if your C1 is a little bit sharp or flat, or if your trims are there when both are in tune. Um, that's just the way it is. You know, just use your ears if you don't have a tuner. Um, tune to a piano, tune to whatever you want. Uh, just, you know, tune one of the oscillators and make sure the other oscillator is likewise in tune. And then the point, main point is to get them to track equally. Two different oscillators.